Whatever came of the Silicon Valley bank debacle that happened in March of last year when one of the biggest banks in the country, the 16th to be exact, collapsed and a bunch of rich people had their money there and the government said, we're gonna bail you out because they had more money than the FDIC insurance would cover and the American people were like, no, please don't bail them out. And then the story just kind of went away. Well, it is now clear what happened and to skip to the end of this, Yes, you, the taxpayer, bailed out all of the rich folks that had their money in Silicon Valley Bank, but it's a little bit more of an interesting story on how we get there. So just to recap, Silicon Valley Bank, March 10th, 2023, shut down by federal regulators after it made several bad bets and had a bunch of people pulling their money out of the bank and therefore was effectively insolvent as a financial institution. A bunch of people, a bunch of rich people, including Oprah, uh, BlackRock, which is an institution, uh, Vanguard, Gavin Newsom, all had their money in Silicon Valley Bank and were screeching at the fact, well, I have more than the $250,000 FDIC insurance will cover what's going to happen to me. And then Joe Biden came out pretty much immediately and said, we'll make everyone a whole which is a weird thing to say because if Silicon Valley Bank wasn't the hub of the rich and powerful, would it have gotten any, any attention? And would it have been bailed out in the same way that SVB was? And a lot of people are like, well, no, they didn't get bailed out. Okay, well, fine, here's what actually happened. After the collapse of the Silicon Valley Bank, the Federal Reserve made an announcement where it clarified that none of the losses would be taken by the taxpayers. Key point there, none of the losses will be taken by the taxpayer. Okay, well, kind of. They said instead the money will come from the FDIC, which is an agency tasked with insuring bank deposits. The money the FDIC uses to cover those bank losses come from quarterly premiums that all insurance banks, insured banks pay to the agency. We'll come back to that in a second, but there's, if, you, if you're following along and trying to figure it out on your own first, there it is right there. The FDIC estimates that the SB, SVB failure will cost its deposit insurance fund $16.1 billion, according to CNN, which we didn't find out until June, months after all of this kind of faded into obscurity when it comes to news stories. The agency plans to recoup those losses by assessing fees on the banks. Okay, well, that's kind of different than what they said at the onset, but we'll, again, pause that for right now. Mike Pence, interestingly enough, was commenting on this and said this. Well, he was running for president at the time, so that's probably why he decided to comment. And, uh, comment. Americans will be paying for the, to guarantee the deposits of many Chinese companies that were SVB customers. Uh, we have to stop the insanity of bailouts, uh, the, the insanity of bailing out failing businesses, which if you might have some strong opinions of Mike Pence, but in this particular instance, he is absolutely right and points out the fact that not only were depositors rich, powerful people already that knew the FDIC insurance limits of $250,000, but also... Chinese companies, and uh, as we all know, China is just a best friend of the United States of America and has done no wrong and seeks to do no wrong to the American people and taxpayers specifically. If you don't know this, the federal, the FDIC stands for Federal Deposit Insurance Corporation, which if this shouldn't come to a shock to you. So the FDIC says, well, no, no, the money is not going to come from taxpayers specifically. What they mean is we're not going to pull money out of the U.S. Treasury that is put there by U.S. taxpayer dollars. Instead, they say, no, 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 the Federal Deposit Insurance Corporation has a fund that we'll just cover this from. Okay, well, then you just have to ask the question for yourself, where does the FDIC get their money? Well, they institute fees, like we said early on in the beginning. There's a monthly, sorry, a quarterly fee that all banks have to pay in order to be FDIC insured, which is up to $250,000 and no more than that. Okay, well, fine, they're a private institution, banks are, and they're allowed to either be insured or not, which is up to the risk of the customer in depositing their money into that bank. Except for, no, not really. All U.S. banks, most U.S. banks, are required to have FDI, 
insurance to be chartered. States, for the most part, make them get it. The long answer is the FDIC, the FDIC's press person themselves says most states require FDIC insurance for their banks. So, when you say that money is not coming from the taxpayer, in theory, I guess you might be correct if you think that the taxpayer only pays quote unquote taxes into the US Treasury. But if they're going to put their money in a banking institution and that banking institution by law is required to have this insurance and pay into that insurance quarterly, that bank is going to pass that cost down to you, the regular everyday taxpayer, and make you pay that fee, not in the form of taxes, but in the form of bank fees in order to put your money in one of America's financial institutions. So at the end of the day, when people say, well, no, the taxpayer didn't bail out the Silicon Valley Bank. Yeah, the US government didn't write a check to the bank to bail them out. And we're not even getting into the fact that they got bought by first citizens and how the assets that the bank had get absorbed by a new bank and they're gonna be able to cover. Bottom line is, 16.1 mil, 16.1 billion dollars is the bill that the FDIC had to pay, and those fees that they make their money from get passed down inherently to you. So no, the U.S. government didn't cut them a check, but the U.S. taxpayer and any American that has their money in an FDIC-insured bank paid to bail out all of the rich people that knew the risks when putting their money in SVB, but did it anyway.